Hi, uh, welcome to the Modern Application Development Screencast. In this short screencast, uh, we will learn how to style our HTML document. Uh, before we start, open the following applications on your Ubuntu desktop so that you can work along with me. Yeah, what we need is a browser, um, Chrome here. Uh, any uh, browser would do, uh, Firefox or Brave is also fine. Then you need a editor, gedit here, which comes default. Um, we need a terminal. This is a default terminal in Ubuntu. Then we have to make sure that the Python 3 is in, installed. We can just do by Python 3. Uh, no, it's installed. Okay. And then we have to make sure that you have downloaded the example uh, HTML, uh, gnanpit.html that we are going to use it to style. We already know CSS stands for cascading style sheets. CSS describes how the elements inside HTML document should be displayed on the screen or in print. There are many ways to style an element inside an HTML document. We are going to see some of it you know, just to experiment. Um, assuming that you already downloaded this manipit.html, uh, if not, take your time and download it. Um, place it inside the same folder which we were experimenting uh, in the previous uh, screencast uh, called mad1 experiment1. So here it is. I've already cd to that location. If you want to double check, you can do ls. You can see that uh, files index.html and nanopit.html are already there. I'm just going to clear. So we're going to start the server um, like before. It's done using Python 3 minus m HTTP dot server. CRVR. So it started the server on, available on any IP address locally and on port 8000. Now we're going to go to browser and type localhost 8000. Now you can see it opened introduction footer dot and uh, footer, which was our previous HTML. As you can see, that's the index.html. Now you might be wondering why it's opening that. Index is actually a special name. If the browser can't find any folder or the server can't find any file, specific file inside a folder, it will try to open the index.html. If you want to open any other file, you have to give the exact path. So let's open nanopit.html. Yeah. So you can see it's a simple file. It has a name or the title. Uh, then some description in the award is section uh, looks like a table you can see the html content i'm just going through the top thing and then this credit where i've credited to wikipedia now to style let's open this in a uh, text editor or uh, your code editor i'm using gedit here i've already opened it here so you can see that uh, it's a html document with the title Granapeat and description. It also has a section called div, which has an H1 Granapeat and then some description as you saw. I'm just going to show it here, this part. And then it has a table, yeah, with a head T head and T body. T head has a header elements. Uh, year, awardees and language, t is like a specific year, awardees name and with which language they produce the literature. So we have till 2019, which was the last one announced. Then we have that is inside our main section. Yeah. And then there is a footer section within which we have an another header element h1 and we have a data source link we are crediting the wikipedia for the data that in this table that we are going to use so now 
This is pretty boring uh, HTML with no style at all. Let's start by adding the style. The simplest way to add style is add directly to the tag that we want to style. Let's say if you want to style a table or you want to style header or you want to style a row, add directly to it. That's done by adding directly uh, an attribute called style. Now let's do one thing. Let's style the header to make it look different from the rest of the uh, items. So okay. Okay, let's do header color background. Let's give some background to this header. Uh, let's give a green color. Yeah, that's done by giving style attribute. And the value of the style attribute is mentioned within double quotes. Now, all the style attributes are given. Yeah with key value pairs like key is for example a uh, background color and value is green um, let's do that let's give background color and colon uh, let's do light green and end by semicolon so this is like the style parameter and the value for it and ended by semicolon separated by colon mm -hmm. then you can i'm going to save this using control s just reload this as you can see the background of the tr which heads that uh, which is part of th is changed to light green here uh, i've given a named html color but uh, i could have also given uh, hexadecimal value for RGB. Since it's green, uh, you give some standard green color. Okay, that would be hash zero zero, which is for red, green, blue. Green is the FF, which means it will be green. Let's save this and reload. Same thing. If nothing changes. Yeah, because we already made green. You can also change it to, like, say, blue, zero. Okay. There, blue. But it doesn't look great. So let's switch back to green. Okay. There you go. This looks better. Now. When we are reading this table, it's difficult to identify uh, one row from another row if you're going fast. So it's usually a good idea to have uh, some kind of background color for alternative rows or you know odd and even rows. Let's give some color uh, to this. this. Similarly, let's give all the let's say all the odd ones a uh, gray color. Okay, let's do light gray. Let Okay, let's see. There you go. Light gray. And I can uh, keep doing for alternative ones. Yeah. Save it and reload it. As you can see, now it become clearer. So, I mean, if you want, you can go ahead and do it for the rest of the thing. I'm going to stop at this point. Yeah. Now, another thing that I want to add to make this table better is add uh, borders around the uh, table and data cells. Um, to add a border around the table, you have to add a style to the table. Let's say style. Yeah. And then we can add border, which is one pixel, which and solid and black. So like, that will look like this. So it, this is defining a border, thickness of one pixel, solid border, and the color of the border is black. Okay, I'm going to save this. 
and rolled. So now it has added the border to the whole table. Here you can see a difference that it's not added for each cell. So if you want to add border to each cell, you have to go and add to each cell. Let me do that for T header, for example. Yeah. Similarly, um, uh, let's do border, border, border. Okay. Correct. So now you can see that there has been a border here, right? Let's add it to one more row, like the first row. Similarly, we'll add border, 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 right? And I'm going to save and reload. So you can see that the border has been added. Now the problem is there has been a border added, you know, for the table and to the cell and between the cell two times because each cell has its own border. Now this doesn't look good. Uh, I want the border, single border between the cells or single border between the cell and the table. So that's done by collapsing the border or you can collapse the border to a single line. Yeah. So let's try and do that. That's done at the table level. You can say for all whole of this table, collapse the border. Yeah. Once you do that, save it, then reload. Now you can see you know, border has been added. It looks much better. We could go on repeating, you know, the same thing to the rest of the table. I'm not going to do that. I'll leave that if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, this is how usually you actually style the elements. You can go ahead and style, you know, at the highest level, like table or at the lowest level, for example, tag. If if you wanted specifically style something for the font, you could also do that styling inside this because you want to do only this. Let's do one thing. I just want to make this um, whole table text align to the center. It's already centered in the header, but I also want to center here, right? Let's try and do that, right? Um, that's done by adding a text align to the table. We can add it to the whole table so it applies to every row, right? Um, let's add that one second. Okay, after this, I'm just gonna give a space and see text align center, yeah? I'm gonna save, see here now, all of the text in every row, every cell is text aligned to center. So you can add it at the top. For example, you don't want to do for this uh, whole table, but want to do it only for specific row. Uh, like for example, I want it only for this row, the second row, yeah. So now uh, you can see that here text has been aligned to center it's after the head of the first row. Text align has been done to the center, but the rest of them continue. Now we could also do this as center. Um, let's do one more experiment. Yeah, I'll do text align center to the whole um, table. Let's say and refresh so everything is excellent to the center now i want only this row which is 1967 to be text aligned to left or let's say uh, yeah let's do that 1967 here to the left okay so i'm going to paste the same thing and make it as left right i'm going to save this and reload so now you can see it's been text aligned to left. The way um, the style works it, it adds the style from top to bottom in the sense highest um, of the tag to the lowest of the tag. It starts with body, then to div, then to the next div, table, table, table. So any of the lower level tags can override the higher level one. So even though text align is center here, we are overridden with um, left here. 
this is like the simplest form of styling we usually call it inline styling where we inline the style attribute along with the tag it's actually not an efficient way uh, to do styling as you can see it leads to a lot of duplication a lot of work and repetition and if you want to change something you have to change across the document many times there's good chance that you will make a mistake also if you have many pages then you'll have to do many times so this is not really efficient is unmanageable and prone to errors the better ways to do it and we'll see that in the next screencast thank you